the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in his fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our worthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, His mercy has given us unto to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join to your entrance hymn number, hymn number 367.
is gracious and merciful. Provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He yes. has shown his people the power of his works and yes. given them the inheritance of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. He has established forever and ever to be the ones of faithfulness and of grace. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Oh, the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And it was the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The epistle reading is taken from St. Paul's Epistle to the Colossians, the third chapter, beginning with the twelfth verse. Drawn then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, that the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please Because now they 
and I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge my baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Join us here in the day of number 380. Simeon appears to be quite elderly also. 
They've been waiting an awfully long time. They've seen a lot of ups and downs in Israel, a lot of hardship for the children of God. If faithfully they wait for the consolation of Israel, faithfully they come to the temple. Anna spends her time night and day fasting and praying. Despite his growing years, Simeon believes that he will not die before he has seen the Lord's Christ. Despite all the reasons that Simeon and Anna had to doubt, despite all their hardships, their sorrow, Simeon and Anna remain faithful. The time grows shorter, the graves are approaching, yet still they wait, not doubting, but believing. They wait for the Lord, they take heart, they are strong, and they wait for the Lord. Their faithfulness puts us to shame when we consider our own willingness to live life in readiness for our Lord's return. Simeon and Anna waited for the Lord, doing what the Lord had asked them to do. When we consider what St. Paul says God expects us to be doing until Christ's return, we see how unfaithful we truly can be. St. Paul tells us we are to spend our time clothed in compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. He calls us to live in forgiveness toward one another. He tells us we are to put on love over all these things. He tells us to let the word of Christ dwell richly among us. Whatever we do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Like Simeon and Anna, God wants us to live life with the coming of Jesus in mind. He wants us to live in patience. He wants us to live in faith, not doubting but believing that He's coming. The living life of that belief in mind, He wants us to live with the fruits of faith. God wants us for us, and yet how is that possible? How can we live like Anna and Simeon? How can we live faithfully, fruitfully, in the way and only in the way that they did? Simeon and Anna weren't waiting in the temple in Jerusalem because they had more patience than anyone else. They weren't waiting because they were better than anyone else. Though Simeon and Anna were waiting because their loved ones said he was coming. God's promise to Simeon kept him watchful and waiting. God's word kept Anna expecting the arrival of Christ. Simeon and Anna didn't make their own faith. They didn't choose to have it. God created their faith through His promises to them. And indeed, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord is at work this day to create such faith in our hearts too. He sets His word before us today to nourish and strengthen the faith that He gave to us in holy baptism. On that glorious day, God promised that we would not die before we saw the consolation of Israel. He promised us that Jesus Christ had taken up our sins upon the cross and paid for them all. He promised us that the blood of Christ covered all our sins. He promised us that He clothed us in the righteousness of Christ. He promised us that we will not be lost to death, but that our Lord will come and take us, that where He is we may be also. He promised us that as our eyes close upon the sorrow of this world, they will open up to gaze upon the glorious face of Christ. Today God confirms that promise. God sets His word before us to keep us faithful. He shows us that in the fullness of time He keeps His promises. He shows us Mary and Joseph bring their baby Jesus to the temple, reveals through Simeon and Anna that this child is the Christ. He proclaims that Christ is his salvation, which he has prepared to send to all people. He is the salvation prepared for us. God sets this man and this woman of the tribe of Israel as witnesses to us that Jesus, the son of Mary, was indeed the son of God, the promised Savior. And then God shows us Jesus being presented at the temple. He shows us Mary and Joseph doing all that the law required. He shows us Jesus being placed under the law, that he might redeem those born under the law, that they might receive adoption as sons. He shows us Jesus fulfilling the law for us, that he might go on to the cross and die for our sins and earn our salvation. The time is long, the waiting is hard. But our Lord is here today in his word, and his word made flesh, to set before you his promises to give you forgiveness, life, and salvation, to sustain and uphold what He gave you in holy baptism, to keep you faithful, to make you fruitful, as you await the final return of the consolation of Israel, your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen. Please rise and pray. that all that have been baptized into Christ may embrace the Christ child by word and faith, so be ready to the
heart whenever they are called. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. mercy. For our families, that they would be harmonious in God's love and ruled by Christ's peace, the word of Christ would dwell richly among us. Fathers and heads of households would teach and admonish their families how wisdom. There are songs, words, and deeds would be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with thanksgiving unto the Father. Let us pray to Him. Lord, have mercy. For delight in the fear of the Lord, that we may entrust ourselves only to Christ, who alone judges all matters in equity and righteousness. For princes and leaders of this world who must judge by what they see and hear, they would be blessed with health and wisdom. And for the discernment that we may honor them before the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, especially those who desire our prayers, our brothers and sisters, Jane, Leo, Lars, Dave, Nancy, Barb, Lori, Eric, Debbie, Betty, Ron, Janelle, Faye, and all of those who suffer in our midst, that according to God's gracious will they would be healed. And for those who mourn, remember especially the family of Annette, that God would fill their hearts with a certain hope for the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who commune this day, that they would see their salvation in the very body and blood of Christ, giving them to eat and drink, and thus the city be prepared to depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for our brothers and sisters who have departed the peace of faith, and that with them we may behold the light of the nation and the glory of Israel in eternal life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Into your hands, dear Father, for the awful which we pray, trusting your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, and on forever. Amen. Maybe see you as we present our offer. service is talking about the extraordinary The Lord be with you. And all of us are with you. Lift up your hearts. We are come to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right inside, church. We should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. We count this blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us. You sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh, and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we may not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. Ever more praise you the same. Jesus our Lord. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. 
Peace of the Lord be with you all.